Hey YouTube! I'm Lizzie and I am the Discount Vegan. I make budget-friendly recipes and teach you how to garden even in the smallest spaces so that you can save money on what you eat and spend it or save it for something else. So if that sounds good to you, then keep watching for today's recipe. So today we are going to add more pasta to our repertoire with everything going up in price. That includes pre-made foods and that includes ravioli like this. So why not make it at home? My pasta dough recipe, you can find it up here. You can also find it down below in the description. I won't be showing you how to make that in this video, but I am going to show you how to make the most delicious butternut sage ravioli. It is creamy, it is flavorful, and with winter finally coming to an end, it is a great send off for the whole root veggie frozen because it's of course frozen butternut squash just like in the butternut squash soup recipe I show. So if that sounds good to you, let's get into today's recipe. Okay, so for the ingredients, you are going to need three cups of frozen butternut squash, half a cup or a small onion diced up as finely as you want it. Your seasonings are going to be half a teaspoon of garlic powder, ground sage, and salt, and a pinch of black pepper. Then you're gonna want a tablespoon of olive oil and whatever syrup of your choice, along with two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Okay, so this is gonna be honestly so simple. Turn your stove on to medium high and put in your olive oil. And now your seasonings. So you're gonna want everything besides the nutritional yeast, the sage, the black pepper, the salt, the garlic powder, etc. Get that in there and kind of let the olive oil soak it up. Then you're going to want to place in your onions. We're gonna wanna saute these until they kind of take on all the seasonings and are slightly translucent and nicely cooked. Like, look at that. They turn green from the sage. It is so pretty to watch. I love the color that sage turns everything. Now you're gonna wanna put in your frozen squash because obviously we have to thaw this out, break everything apart, of course. And then you just wanna, you know, not burn it while it's de-thawing and soaking in all the delicious seasonings and spices. Every once in a while, because we're gonna wanna mash this, you're gonna wanna check to see, you know, how cooked through everything is. Once everything is de-thawed and nice and soft, that's when you put your sweetener in, table syrup, whatever you have, and your nutritional yeast. The sweetener obviously sweetens it up, brings out the flavor, of the butternut squash a little bit more and the nooch the nutritional yeast really just kind of thickens everything together and makes it kind of cheesy and nutty and now 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 now's the fun part like I told you I wasn't gonna show you rolling out of the dough cuz why I have another video for that linked. But now we just want to put a little dollop 
on each section. I usually spread them about a finger width apart. These are actually quite big. You don't have to make ravioli this big. I just liked it for kind of, you know, presentation, that kind of thing. But if you want to make them smaller, by all means, make them smaller. So what I like to do is I just take it and put a whole sheet of filling down. Obviously, my cutting board is very small. So we're just kind of going to work with it and deal because that's what we do when we are on tight budgets, right? We just kind of work with what we have and deal with it. Now you're going to want to make things really easy on yourself and flip over the top and just push everything down with your fingers. It is not a difficult procedure, I promise you. Make sure you get all four edges. Make it look like a nice rustic that sounds so cliched, homemade ravioli because it does not have to look perfect or like it's manufactured. I prefer it not to look like it's manufactured. So I've chosen to kind of cut everything apart as I'm going because I have lack of space, obviously. So if you have lack of space, this is a really great option as well. You can also pre-cut the size that you want. That can potentially also help you if you don't know how much filling to put in. I put in a little over a tablespoon of filling, roughly. You can put in a lot less or a lot more if you want to make big old raviolis. And now I'm just going to continue doing this it's pretty cut and dry you're doing the same thing over and over again until you are done with either your filling or your pasta whichever comes first for me it was my filling because I purposely made extra pasta okay so now that that's all done you can see them all here. I made about 17-ish at this point. But again, like these are double the size of a store-bought ravioli. So you can always make them smaller and then you'll get more. But this right here would probably feed two to four people anyways. So now all you got to do is make sure the edges are firmly closed because that's really important when you're going to be boiling pasta. And now all you got to do is cook them in some nice salty water. Okay. So we've moved over to the stove now and we just want to boil some nice salty water so that we can cook up these ravioli so that we can eat them and enjoy them. And if you notice, they go right to the bottom. So that means they're not cooked and as soon as they start rising just like gnocchi and other pastas that's when you know that they are cooked so they're going to spend some time on the bottom and cook from there and of course don't overcrowd your pot you overcrowd the pot and everything gets sticky and you don't want everything sticking together. Okay, here you can see after just like a minute or so, 
the raviolis are starting to float. They will all float down here. It takes a minute or so though. So once you get them all cooked and all floating, that's all you have to do. It's that simple. From there, just scoop them out. Make sure you drain that pasta water because you don't want watery plates with your ravioli. And you are done. And a really quick way to get them out without the water, use your handheld strainer. Just scoop them up and then you can drain them out and plop them on your plate because it's that easy. Okay, so that is how simple it is to make butternut, squash, and sage ravioli. Super simple. You don't have to make them as big as I did. If you make them like half the size, then you're going to have a lot more. But I mean, uh, I think that's quite a bit right there. If you ask me, that would easily satisfy a family of four. If you have it, I'm actually going to store mine away, freeze it and have it for dinner tonight, of course. So I hope you enjoy today's recipe. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe down below and click that bell icon so that you get notified every week when I post. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.